Dios. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. That we may hear your word. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Sing songs and worship, praise. And hallelujah, hallelujah. For those of you who have made your way into the room to worship. To pray, to lift the name of our King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I see in this chat on this Shabbat Israelites and companions from all over the world. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Let me see who's in this chat. Gwendolyn is in the chat. Hallelujah. Is that Shimon in the chat? Marcia and Billy and Anitra. Alicia's in the chat. Hallelujah. See, Bruce. Boy, they rolling fast. Israelites coming on in the room. Bo Joe is in the front, is in the house. Hallelujah. Roger, Craig, Kathy. And watch this. We from all over the world. Alabama's in the house. Hallelujah. Glad to have you. Houston, Texas. Humble, Texas in the house. Pennsylvania. North Carolina's in the house. St. Louis, Missouri. North Carolina. London is in the house. Worldwide, Zion. Memphis is in the house. Texas is in the house. Indiana, South Carolina, Philadelphia is in the house. Cali in the house. Florida and Missouri and Mississippi and Costa Rica. Barbados is in the house. Hallelujah. Tanzania, Florida, Amsterdam. Didn't we tell you it's all over the world? Only I by ya. Only I by ya could gather his people from all over the world. Let me look at this chat again. Not so great. <laughs> Not so great Britain is in the house. Woo-wee. <laughs> Tickle me. Barbados is in the house. Tennessee is in the house. Glad to have you. Michigan is in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's so beautiful. Columbus, Ohio, Atlanta, in the house, Georgia, Texas. If the word of Yah's reaches, just like it has been prophesied, just like it was prophesied, that in the last days he waved his hand the second time again to recover the house of Israel. And where would we be? According to the book of Isaiah, where would we be when he would wave his hand a second time to recover us? Where would we be? He said we would be in the four corners of the earth. And we will be coming back to from where? The north, the south, the east, the west, the islands. Is there anything else? <laughs> That's the only place we can be in the north, south, east, west, and the islands. And we are in all those places scattered there. How did we get scattered there, Moray? Through the slave trade captivity 
through persecution. We are exiles. And most of us, unfortunately, are still living in the land of our captivities. And those who are even living in the promised land are having the unfortunate experience of being in a land, being in our land, while it is being trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. But it won't be long, Zion. Y'all hold on. In the four corners of the earth, hold on. It won't be long. It won't be long. Our king is to return and gather us together to be with him, where we will reign and rule with him, where the Torah will be the law book. <laughs> Whoo, what a good day. Wait a minute, the Torah will be our school book. The Torah will be our sociology book. The Torah uh, will be our history book. The Torah will be our book on agriculture. The Torah will be our book on architecture. We'll, we'll learn better than this heathen who continually builds houses on the sand. <laughs> Y'all know the more is telling the truth. Now we're going to build our houses according to the Torah. We'll plant our fields. Horticulture. This will be our book on that, how to plant. Yes, this will be our book on criminology. This will be our book on sociology, as I said before. And watch this. This is going to be our psychological handbook. This is going to be our mental health handbook. This is going to be it all. We're going to be in the kingdom being ruled by the righteous king. Don't you forget it. So hold on, Zion. Just a few more weary days. A few more. Time is ticking. It's just going to be a few more Risings and setting of the sun. I can see it. What do you see, Moe? Time. What's going on with time? It's winding up. Prophecies are being fulfilled. Israel is waking up. Look at, listen to that. Time is winding up. Israel is waking up. Oh, I need that on a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> I need to let that world know that. I need to write that right there or Omar, somewhere. Time is winding up. Israel is waking up. And there's nothing nobody can do to stop either one. Oh yes, this is this is Yah's doing. And what? It's wonderful in our eyes. So hold on, Zion, to his laws, statutes, and the commandments. It won't be long. Our king is coming and we will be going home. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, if you can see the more, okay. You can hear me all right. Would you place a seven in this chat? And toda riba for all of you who came in the room with the right ruah. In other words, that word that's been breath or spirit. You came in the room with hallelujahs. Praising the very name of our King Yahushua, Hamashiach. You came in greeting one another. You came in celebrating the fact that even in our captivities, 
in the lands of our captors. We could gather together in his name and watch this and keep the Shabbat holy. The king said, remember the Shabbat. And then here come this man-made religion talking about forget the Shabbat. No, you heathens. We're going to remember the Shabbat. And if we got to make our way to the Shabbat out of breath, we make our way to the Shabbat having worked our fingers to the bone. We make our way to the Shabbat after having to travel through mess, work our way to the Shabbat, coming through pain and, and anguish being talked about and lied on. We got to make our way to the Shabbat. We got to come through drama and trauma, but we're going to make our way to the Shabbat. We're going to make our way to the Shabbat, whether we ate steak or whether we ate ramen noodles, we're going to get to that Shabbat. And whether or not we drove a fancy car or whether or not we was on a bicycle or whether we had to walk, we made it to the Shabbat. And what did we do? We came in the Shabbat to give him praise. Regardless of what's going on in the world around us, regardless of what happened to us this week, we came into the Shabbat with the praise of Yah and thanksgiving in our hearts to tell him, thank you, thank you, thank you on this holy Shabbat. And all I can say is hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, you ain't worried about that. It ain't that, not on the Shabbat. You know, so and so is that now. Yeah, okay. But this is the Shabbat. And woo, when I tell y'all, and I know I work on the Shabbat as my labor of love for the house of Israel. It's a labor, but it's a labor of love. I look forward to the Shabbat. I don't hold the Shabbat in contempt. I, I praise Yah. And I get a chance to be in the room with you. Who we're going to talk about on this Shabbat. The great white throne judgment. If you heard the morning, would you put a 12 in here for the 12 tribes of Israel, please? What did you say, Moray? Oh, yeah. We're going to tell the truth. About what? The great white throne. We will be in the book of the Revelation. Yes, that so-called scary book that these heathen Christians told you to stay out of. So nobody understand that book. It's scary. Hard to understand. Nobody knows. I'm millennial, pre-millennial, post-millennial, no millennial. Nobody knows that book. You can't study that book. You got the you got the Calvinists look at it and the Protestants and the crank and the crank and the hop and the hop and the you liars, you thieves, and you robbers. How do you fix your mouth? to tell the very children of Israel to not be in the very book that the whole scripture is leading to, to reveal who we are and whose we are and how this thing, how this thing culminates with our king and us reigning with him. Who you thought you had won. You never figured on y'all waving his hand a second time, huh? And, and, and hallelujah, he waved it over here in California. You can't go no further west than California or you're going to be in the water. And I am on the edge of the water. Watch this. And he waved it out here in the country. And my eyes opened up. I said, this is us. And once I saw it, all the Bible went like this. Click, 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 click. It was the key. 
that unlocks the mysteries and we're going to expose a little bit because I don't want to deal with these heathen too much, but we're going to expose some of these heathen lies about our book today, this white throne. So you want to have your books out. You want to be ready because we're going to be studying that. Hallelujah. 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 Revelation chapter 20 is where we're going to be. Um, if you understood that, put a 21 in the chat, please. Let me get a little drink of water. Let me get a sip of this water. I can already tell. The way I feel the fire burning this morning. Feeling good like a Hebrew should. Uh, this weekend, no, no, next week, the 19th of uh, February, we're going to be in Los Angeles. Um, all of the people that are coming to the to the workshop, it's the uh, ARC workshop, the new ARC workshops this year. Hopefully, not only here in the States, but we're going to try to make it to a couple of islands before the year is out. Um, yes, bringing our team, hallelujah, to share the message with our brothers and sisters everywhere. Um, the ARC workshop is going to be on the 19th. If you have signed up and you realize that you cannot attend, would you please contact Jasmine at the Hannah and I Project or at the ARC? Um, contact Jasmine at the ARC. Let her know because when we mentioned that it had closed, people all over was like, what do you mean it's full? And I was trying to tell you Israelites, it was going to fill up fast. But you know how some of us do wait to the last minute. So if you did wait to the last minute and you really want to come, um, you might want to check in like a couple of days, maybe before the 19th, to see whether or not there was a Hebrew or uh, Israelite that said, cannot make it. And I was talking to with Iran. We were putting together, finishing up all of the different, you know, things of the, the, the details and stuff. And he told me to say this. And I don't want to forget that. The uh, limited space is not um, on the ark. We didn't do that. The hotel that we went to, or the hotel that was available, only had limited space. And therefore, we cannot, according to the Torah even, we can't break the law and put more people in the room than the, whatever that ticket thing, the tag that the fire department put up there that says, not safe. So that's why. So we don't want people all over the world talking about, man, people came down and couldn't get in. They must think they up the ups and muckety bucks. Nope, that's not what happened. We filled up the space. So hopefully next time we come into an area near you, get in fast. When you hear it announced, then you need to sign in that day. All right. But if you're not going to make it, please let someone, um, please let uh, Jasmine know. It's going to be a great time. I won't get into that right now. How many of you all had an opportunity to catch some of the videos that were put up this week um, that I preached and taught during the week? Because prayerfully, you were able to see some. If you have, won't you put a, put a 100 in here? If you had a chance to see the videos that were put forth this past week, put a 100. Let me see if anybody else is watching them other than, oh, okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is good to know that these messages are being um, received by you, Zion. Don't forget to um, like the messages. Don't forget to share the messages. We cannot depend on YouTube to share these messages with your friends, with your families. Watch this. With your loved ones and even your enemies. 
for for even Yah said he doesn't take desire in the death of the wicked. So we want these messages to go out to the whole world. Why? Because time is winding up. Our king is about to return and the judgment day is very near. Whether people believe it or not is irrelevant. I'll talk about that in a moment. But you can be a part of helping to wake up Jacob by watching the videos, participating in the videos, and sharing the videos with others. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And of course, as always, support the work of the ark. If you, if you look forward to Shabbat because of the preaching and the teaching and the insight that goes forth, and after the Shabbat, you feel like you have been blessed, that you've been helped, that you have been supported, then why not do the same thing for the work of the art? Bless us, support us, and for show, sure, pray for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because I, I may know this more than most people, that, that what we're doing we need, we need Yah's power to continue to do this. Because when I finish preaching these messages and sermons, people will tell you, I'm wow. I have nothing left. I'll be on E. <laughs> I'll be out of gas. I say, Maury, are you serious? Oh, yeah. I have to leave it. I have to leave it all. And for Yah to then restore my soul, recuperate, to allow me to recuperate and then do my mind with whatever he has to do to fix it, to be able to be in a position to present again is something that to me is almost supernatural. To me. But he continues to do it. And it's because of you. He continues to do it because of you. And I know some of you have been in this room a long time. And, and you, you ask the question. Sometimes I ask the same question. How can I come in a, in the chat room and listen to this Maury teach? And every time, even if it's a thousand different times, every time he shows me something I've never seen before. How is that even possible? You would think after a while, you would just start repeating over and over and over again. Why do you keep getting more insight? Let me, let me tell you, it's not a secret. Study, number one, and the Ruach. The very breath of Yah that's in the that's in these words. <laughs> and if these other preachers will stop trying to be so, well, we won't get into that. I'm not gonna do that today. But if people would dedicate themselves to the study of Yah's word, they would also get insight and revelation too. But you're not going. You're not. You're not getting ready. To get deep into y'all's word, and every day, all day, you just doing this, <laughs> swiping. I'm not gonna do it, Zion. You can't be swiping. <laughs> Talking about, oh, I'm gonna get deep in the word. It don't work like that. No, it's just gonna be old fashioned. Pick up your Bible. Get some paper, something to write with. Start reading and praying and asking how about you. It is a labor, but it's a labor of love. And those that understand that and support this work, told our If you if you understand it and are not supporting, you should pray and ask Abaya what you should do because we are out here on his word, full time. 
I was talking to him. Um, your Ron's grandfather, so I just call him grandpa myself. Hey, Gramps, how you doing? And I said, uh, you know, you got to tell people about tithes and offerings, but they don't want to hear it. And he said, what difference does that make? I said, what's that? Whether they want to hear it or not. I said, preach, Grandpa. <laughs> hey, what difference does that make? Whether they want to hear it or not. Your job is to preach the Bible, ain't it? Is to preach the truth, ain't it? You're wrong. Did Grandpa say that or not? Isn't it? Put in the chat. I said, man, you know, you get up talking about tithes and all that people. He said, what difference does that make? I said, you're right. We preach about everything else in the Bible. We got to preach the tithes and offerings too. It's part of our, it's part of our relationship with Yah as we study the Bible and we grow as Israel. And I like the attitude of a 90-year-old man who's been doing it all his life. And you know what he told me? He said, don't forget to tell him. Now, this is this is grandpa. He said, don't forget to tell him that the tithe, the blessing in the tithe is for them. I said, I've been trying to say that. He said, don't forget that part. It's for them. It's their way of getting blessed. It's not just for you. It's for them. So guess what I'm doing today? I'm telling you what the old man told me. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So as you give, be prayerful about it. I want to. Um, play this song. I haven't played it in a while, but I feel like it um, today. Where is it? Did it, hold on Zion. Did it get taken off of my, 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 my? That's okay. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Let's use this one. Speak to my heart, yeah. I need you to. How about y'all? We come before your presence on this holy Shabbat. Casting our cares on you because the word say you care for us. We recognize your power, your holiness, and your grace. We realize that without you, we can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. Abaya, we lift families. We ask you, Abaya, to strengthen the families of those that you are waking up in these last days. That we learn the Torah, walk in your ways, be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For those that are married, strengthen the husband to be the man of the house, strengthen the woman to be the helper, to be the companion. Strengthen them both to be the leaders of the children, the teachers and the examples. Teach the children how to be obedient to the parents. Make our families what you have designed them to be. Now for those that are single, teach them how to possess their vessels in honor 
to respect you and your way and your will and to seek first the kingdom is righteousness where we are sick bring healing where we're down trodden lift us up and as we support and give Help us to do it with a cheerful spirit, realizing that your word said you return it. Some 60, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Hallelujah. 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 Whew. We're going to be in Revelation. But I think before we get into this word of judgment, we need to hear this. shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Hallelujah. 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 Zion. 
That's our national anthem. Did you hear me? That's our national anthem. Shema Israel, Yahuwah. You know what? The other day, uh, I got a uh, a recommendation, and the recommendation that came up said, "Click this." If you want to hear the shimmer, <laughs> I said, what are they talking about? We got the national anthem. Watch this. And they said, we have replaced Adonai with Yahuwah. <laughs> I said, are you heathens? <laughs> Y'all something else. It was, a, it was a heathen. They said, we replaced Adonai with Yahuwah. And I said, I wonder where y'all got that from. You ain't fooling the moon, right? You ain't fooling me. Y'all didn't want to say Yahuwah. Y'all were saying, still trying to cover up the name of our king of kings and master of master, our Elohim Yahuwah. You were still trying to cover the name. And then you're going to send me <laughs> a rendering of the Shema with, with Adonai out and Yahuwah in. You're going to send that to me. And I'm the one to talk to Jasmine about when she when she rewrote the song. She rewrote the song almost 10 years ago. Me and I was talking, and, the, and, I, and I said, put, say Yahuwah. She said, Dad, you know what? You're right. I'm going to call you right back. And then she, she changed it from Adonai to Yahuwah. She sent it back to me. I said, that's it. That's it right there. That's it. We start singing that song, went all over the world. Now he done done heard it. Try to act like he the one changed it. <laughs> and they sent it to me. <laughs> I said, well, the Bible does say that the heathen and the Gentiles were supposed to come to the mountain that they're going to flow to it. They'd be reaching out for the coat of the Israelite. Okay, going to reach out on it. But don't try to act like you the first one that did it, heathen. <laughs> Gentile boy, y'all something else. And didn't give Hannah Knight Project or Jazz no credit or nothing. Didn't say, oh, by the way, I heard this from uh, the Hannah Knight Project. I just thought I'd share with No, he just quite like he did it. <laughs> just like everything else, huh? <laughs> boy, you heathen gonna pay. You know that, right? You were saying I don't know. Well, at least you're saying the Shema, but you should be intellectually honest if you're going to do the Shema. Let me get into this lesson. Whoo wee. Somebody said, Maury seemed to be extremely happy today. Well, I am. How can you be happy? Well, I get a chance to talk about my king. Now, when I say I'm happy, that don't mean I'm giddy happy. It just means that based on, based on what is happening and based on what is going to happen, I am, I'm glad. What's, what are you glad about? I'm glad that we get a chance to set the record straight. Why? Because there have been so many lies about the white throne judgment. There have been so many fairy tales, satanic imaginations 
doctrines of demons, fools, heathen, potentates, who have all taken this and whoo, twisted it and perverted it so bad. Watch this. That for the most part, the average person really doesn't know anything about the greatest day that everyone is going to experience on this on, on earth. You don't know about it. And it's coming. What day is that, Moray? Judgment day. It's coming. Let's read the Bible. Revelation chapter 20 and once again I'm going to try to help the whole world see some things. Yahushua shows it to me, I'll show it to you. Once again, the heathen through trickeration and sleight of hand and evil intent have taken the greatest day of judgment in the world and tagged it and just tagged it like a little postscript on the back end of a chapter. How do you take the great white throne judgment, the greatest day in the, in the, in the life of the human, the, the reckoning day, the day that this is all leading up to? Ah, there was a beginning in Genesis. And from that beginning, there has been this day that we keep talking about through Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. We read it about judgment in Joshua and Judges. We, we read it in Psalm. We read it in Isaiah and Jeremiah. We read it in Ezekiel. We read it in Daniel. We read it in Amos. We read it. Ah, in Joel, in Obadiah, you got all these books of the Bible. Woo! We read it in Malachi, and we read it in Matthew, and in Mark, and in Luke, and in John, and we read it in Peter, and we read it in in in, in James, and we read it in John, and then we we get to the Revelation, where we finally get to it, and these heathens. Knowing that's the, that's the greatest day and that's the number one day that you better be uh, aware of, Zion. And instead of that day being the beginning of a new chapter, you tagged it at the end of a chapter. And those of you who did it, and you did it with that sleight of hand, and with that evil intent to hide that day from the house of Israel, understand something. You are going to hell for that. Don't think you're not. And number two, it don't matter where you try to hide it and how you try to list it and your little man-made divisions of the word of Yah. Yah was going to raise up preachers after his own heart that would feed the house of Israel. And I wanna be one of, be here to tell you that I'm getting ready to feed the house of Israel by showing them something. This needs its own chapter all by itself. 
And whether you understand it or not, I'm going to show it to you. See, I got educated in these heathen schools. And I, I was an English major before I moved to theology and got my doctorate. And I know when a chapter ends and a new chapter begins. Let me tell you what else I know. Went to a little small school. I know how a sentence starts and how a sentence ends. And I also know how a paragraph starts and how a paragraph ends. And I know how a chapter starts and how a chapter ends, you heathens. How do you tag the final day of judgment at the end of another chapter? Instead of giving that day one of the greatest days ever, its own chapter. So guess what? Because the chapter divisions and the numbers are put there by the hands of the heathens and they're not necessarily inspired. Now how about this? We just make it the beginning of a chapter today. <laughs> Call it what? The great white throne chapter. How about that? You need to know where that is. Flip through your Bible. You're going to be right there. Great white throne. It's going to get its own heading. You heathens. Just going to just put it in. Hopefully we just run by it. Huh? No, we're not going to run by this. That day is coming. Whether you try to downplay it or not, that day is coming. Now, because this should be its own chapter, I'm going to read it the way it's written, but now I'll explain to you that you need to highlight this in your Bible. Listen to chapter, listen to verse 10 of chapter 20. Listen to verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the where the beast that's beast government and the false prophet that's beast religion and shall be tormented oh my I ain't got time how long I mean when day and night how long is this gonna last forever and ever and one of you heathens had nerve to make a video talking about ain't no such thing as eternal torment, that that would be unfair. And no Elohim would, would, would allow people and to be tormented forever. When they die, it's, they're done. It's over. You will lie. You will wonder. Your breath stank. And none of us are going to watch you anymore. How about that? Whenever Israel hears anything like that, after they have listened to channels like this one and heard the preaching from the Moray and read it for themselves, the next time you even try to fix your lips to say it, they're going to hurry up and turn you off. And you better hope they just do the turning off because some of these Israelites that's waking up to the truth, boy, they're close to cussing all the time. And you just might have to hear a few choice words. I'm getting better, so. But, because how can you tell somebody that and we can read, it says day and night forever and ever. Period. Now we starting a new chapter. What is that? And I saw. What? Then I saw. See, period. Then it should say, and then I saw. So after the devil and the beast and the false prophet shall be tormented forever and ever in hell, <laughs> in the lake of fire, you see it? That's forever and ever. Okay, yeah, I highlighted it. I'm not telling y'all to do something I'm not going to do. Now he said, now I looked around. Now what'd you see? 
I saw a great white throne. You saw what? Yeah, after the devil, the false church was gone, which is primarily Christianity. And all other false fake religions, they were thrown like fine. And the false government set up by the beast, which the government and the religion work together. It was thrown into the lake of fire. And then the beast himself, and then the, the devil himself, who was the dragon, is thrown into the lake of fire. And they're burning. How long? Forever and ever. And all you heathens, and all of you followers of these heathens that fix your lips to say that that's not true, you a liar. Verse 11. And then I saw, or and I saw, on top of that, I saw this. What did you see? A great white throne. Now, I, answer me something. I, I want to show you all this, uh, the way this heathen works, even with the Bible. I noticed that here it says, and I saw a great white throne, and it's not capitalized. It doesn't stand out. In other places, when you want to make an emphasis on something, for instance, like when you when you talked about Babylon and you said mystery Babylon, you capitalized it. But when you came to the great white throne, you didn't even capitalize it. Oh, but you didn't think none of us went to a little small school. What is it about this heathen? He don't want to know about want us to find this great white throne judgment. John said, I don't care how he write it. <laughs> I saw it. If everybody in this chat understands what the Moray is saying, that this is so important, it should be capitalized and emboldened. The throne, the great white throne, do, do me a favor and, 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 and put a hallelujah 100 in this chat, please. Would you do that? Would you put, would you just make, help me on this holy Shabbat? Encourage me by letting me know you can at least see that. That this, that we shouldn't be just running over this like it's any other version of the Bible. No, and I saw a great right throne. You saw a what? And the money's just rolling through here. You saw what? I saw a white throne. Hold on. What kind of white throne was it? Was it like a little one? No. Was it just like a big throne? What kind of throne? Man, it was great. It was, it was great. <laughs> it was huge. It's powerful. Let me get it straight. After the world religion and the world government, which is primarily, as I said before in previous videos, modern day Christianity. Because remember, I, I go back and watch the videos, you'll understand it. I'm not talking about people who follow our king. We're going to get to that in a moment. There is a religion that is not a biblical religion that has used that term, even though they don't follow Hamashiach. They are counterfeits. They are put in, they are thrown into hell and then thrown into the lake of fire, right? Along with the devil that deceived them which means that the devil who is the dragon, I want you all to hear me, does not live in hell. Did you hear me? Yes, I know the heathen depictions of it. That you go, you die and go to hell and then you go down there and there's the devil. And the devil is like running hell and the devil is running the bottomless pit and his demons work from there and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's the picture they try to paint. But the devil don't run hell. Hell is a prison. Mm -hmm. 
Hell is a prison of torment and torture. That torments and tortures forever. So Satan, the devil, is more scared of hell than you. Okay, Moe, you went over everybody's head. If y'all understood what I said. No, Moe, that ain't in the Bible. Yes, it is. He's not in hell. He's here right now. You're going to see the devil in hell. No, he's going to hell, but he's not in hell right now. He's not in the bottomless pit. He's not in the lake of fire. But well, where is he? He's here. Doing what? Sending his angels and spirits and demons to do what? To talk to y'all. To try to convince you against your king. To convince you against the Torah. To convince you about the feast days. To convince you to, be, to forget the laws and the statutes and the commandments. He got a job to do. To keep Israel in disobedience to the covenant. By any means necessary. But of course we learned that after he tried to, to take us, we, we see his end. He said, uh, and he is in torment. How long? Day and night. Forever. And ever. And then he says, and I saw. What did you see after that? A great white throne. Did you really? Mm -hmm. So in the rest of the time I have with you, Zion, I want to talk about that. Before we, before we finish the whole thing today, I want to just talk about this, this one line. And I saw a great white throne. Did you really see that? So yeah. So this is not make believe. Mm -mm. This is just not European lies. No. So what are you telling us, John? You're hocking up. He says, I'm telling you the truth. I'm speaking in all honesty. And what I'm going to lay down to you is actual fact. Okay, point number one, judgment day is coming. What do you mean? You heard me, I saw it. Right, you saw the devil and the beast and the system. Oh, I did see that and how it ended up. But that wasn't the end. What do you mean that wasn't the end? See, that's my cousin wrote this. Yehakana is my cousin. He said, cousin, listen. That's not the end. Okay, well, the devil is destroyed, right? And the false church and the false government is gone, right? Yeah. Burning mm -hmm. forever and ever, day and night, forever and ever. Yes. So uh, the end. No, not the end. No. It's not the end. But it sounds like the end. I don't care what it sounds like. That's not the end. After that, I saw a great white throne. Okay. It's, it was like, it was, it was judgment day. All right. 
And him that sat on it. Wait, 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 wait. So you saw the throw. I did. Yahakanan, the whole world is listening to me preach right now. From every place on earth, they're hearing the more. I need you to. Say that again, because they need to hear it. I know what you told me, but they need to hear it. Can you speak to the world one more time? You said you saw the great white throne. Yes, I saw it. But I also saw him. Come on now. Who? Him. Who? Him. No, yes, I did too. And let me tell you what he was doing. He wasn't standing beside it. Like some of you heathens trying to write. Ooh, I got, ooh, he. He wasn't standing beside it. What was he doing? He was sitting on it. Okay, wait, 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 wait. This him person that you're talking about. Are you trying to tell me that during the judgment or at judgment day, but number one, it is coming. And number two, you saw the person sitting on it, on the throne. That if just not a throne, you saw the person that was sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. <sighs> hold on now, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta let that sink in. Who is that talking? Is that you, Daniel? Daniel, is that you? All right, Daniel, you want to say something in this message? What you want to say to Israel? <clears throat> Yosh. Yes. Tell Israel. I saw it too. No! Come on, man. Tell him. John ain't lying. I saw it too. Then you saw what? I saw the throne. Yahakanan ain't lying. He saw it. Daniel, how you? I saw it too. Okay. Then what else did you see? I saw the I saw the one sitting on it too. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Daniel. Are you trying to tell me you saw the judgment? And you saw the one who was judging. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, somebody else calling? Who is that? Is that you, King David? That's me, Yosh. What do you have to... I saw it too. Oh, come on! Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. These heathens told us to stay out of Revelation. These heathens told us nobody could understand it. These heathens told us that John was in some kind of weird celestial... You know, he was having visions and dreams that nobody could understand. So, you know, they didn't even put it in capital letters, nor did they give this the beginning of a chapter. None of that. They just so so are you telling me? He said, Yo, you my great grandson. 
you know good and well, I ain't gonna lie to you. I saw it too. You saw what? I saw judgment. And what else? I saw the one who judged. Okay. So Yahakana, I get you and Daniel and Grandpa David. I know that is that it? That's all the one that saw it. Who else is in here? That's, somebody else saw it? Who else saw it? Keep up. You what up, cuz? What's going on, Keeper? Are you preaching on the judgment? Mm -hmm. The throne, the, the last day, the, the, the last day, the, the day of judgment, the final judgment. Are you talking about that day? Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to go on record since you're speaking to Israel. Tell them that I said John ain't lying. John ain't lying. I saw it too. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your hawk and none saw it. Daniel, you saw it. David saw it. Peter saw it. Joe. <laughs> Joe said. Yo! Joe. What's up, cuz? What's up with you, man? You on my subject. I wrote a whole book about it. You didn't read it? Yeah, I read it. I mean, but does Israel know it? I don't know. I did. I wrote a whole book on that. But on, on what? That day of judgment. John ain't lying. I saw it too. So you saw the day of judgment mm -hmm. and you saw the judge. You sure did. <clears throat> I can't get it. I can't hear from all y'all today, but I got to hear from Moses. Moses, is that really you with your hand up? You don't have to put your hand up in this class. You can have a class. You're Moses. You can teach the class. I don't need to say nothing, Moses. Yeah, but Maury, I know you're speaking to the Israelites, right? Yeah. I told them way back in Deuteronomy. About what? The judge. The prophet that showed to come. And I told them way back then, they better listen to him. They better listen to him because it will be him. What? Who will be the final judge? And if they don't listen to him, their soul will be required at his hand. I told them that a long time ago. So now, John ain't lying. David ain't lying. Daniel's not lying. Kepha's not lying. Wait a minute. And who else? Don't let me run the road. Joel ain't lying. Isaiah's not lying. Ezekiel's not lying. None of them are lying. I saw him. And what did you do? I tried to tell the people, y'all better get right. You better keep these covenants, these laws and statutes and the commandments because the final judge will have the final say. Okay, all I can do is tell Israel. Now I can't spend, I see all y'all, not everybody in the old, not everybody that done wrote something in the Bible got your hand up. Okay. Everybody want to say something. I can't, I, I, it's one message. I cannot, I can't, 
I don't have enough time. Time would fail me to bring up everybody who talk about this day. So, okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do for Israel on this Holy Shabbat. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna touch on some of the verses that some of y'all talked about. And we're gonna let Israel go on a little biblical calisthenics with us. All right. Now, Israel, if y'all in the room, it's biblical calisthenics time. All these preachers in here want me to say something about the judgment day, but I don't have enough time. I can't spend that much time. But they all said, Yahakanah not lying. And they all said there is a judgment day, and they all told us who the judge was. So where these heathens come up with, ain't no judgment day. Where these heathens come up with trying to figure out if it's two people on the throne, one person on the side, one person sitting there, and one person floating around on top. What's going on here? I can hear all my ancestors saying, yo, calm down. <laughs> Got to preach the gospel. Okay. Let's start with Deuteronomy 18. Let's start with Deuteronomy. I'm sorry. Let's start with Deuteronomy 50. Let's start with Deuteronomy 15. Is it 15 I want or 18? 18. Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, chapter 15. I mean, verse 15. I'm going to highlight this for Zion. This is where it starts. This is where it starts. This is the first time we hear about this ultimate and final judge. First time. Now, of course, Abraham is going to tell us that Yah is going to judge, but we're going to see something here that's pretty incredible. Yahuwah, thy Elohim, will rise up unto thee a prophet. Now, notice they capitalized prophet. <laughs> From the midst of thee, of thy brethren, of who? This is important. I'm going to be back right here in this sermon, if y'all let me get here. So underline that. Of thy brethren. Underline that in your Bible. Of thy brethren. So now that word is ah. And it has to do with the same blood. Bloodline relative. I'm going to show you what it means in a minute. But just underline it now. Like unto me, unto him, you will listen. According to all that thou desireth of Yahweh your Elohim and Oreb and the day of the assembly, saying, let, not, let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my Elohim. They were scared. Neither let me see this great fire. What? What happened at Sinai? Yah came down. What does John see? Yah come down. To do what? Judge Israel. What did these people see? Yah was judging Israel. Ooh, I ain't got time. It was such a terrible and awesome day that he said, don't even let a person touch this mountain while I'm up here. Writing these laws, statutes, and commandments and judgments. Don't let them touch it or they're going to die. Tell them to, tell them to get their cats and dogs away from the bottom of the mountain. Sheep and goats, little lambs. I don't care what it is. It better not touch this mountain. You remember that day? And so the people said, saying, let us not hear again the voice of Yahuwah, my Elohim. Neither let me see this great fire anymore. Remember the word fire. You underline that too. 
that I die not. Why? I don't want to die. And Yahuwah said unto me, they have well spoken. <laughs> that which they have spoken. Verse 18. I will rise them up a prophet. From among their brethren. There it is again. Their brethren. Their brethren. Their brethren. Their brethren. Their kinfolk. Like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And, and, and so that none of you will ever mistake who this is. Yahushua Hamashiach is this prophet. He confessed to the Pharisees in front of the whole world. I don't have my own words. Every word that I speak, I speak it because my father gave me that to speak. He, our king only spoke the words. Why? Because our king, who also is our prophet, was sent by Yah, and Yah put the words into Hamashiach's mouth. Fulfillment of scripture, 100%. And he shall speak unto them, watch this, all that I command him. So therefore, our king was also under the commandment of Yah. Verse 19, and it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, that's word for word what Hamashiach said. I will, and there's the word require, is judge. I will require it of him. In other words, that person is going to have to stand in front of me in a judgment. Ooh, we. Okay. Thank you, Moses. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're going to leave you for now because that was heavy. And if y'all saw that, put a 1,000. Moses said, y'all told me the judge was coming. I hear you. I, I hear you. Uh, I hear you, King David. I hear you. I hear you, King. I'm, I'm trying to get there now. I'm trying to get there now. King David, I'm trying to get there now, Dawid. Grandpa, I'm, I'm getting there right now. He want me to hurry up and tell y'all about who he is. And you know what? I'm glad to do it. He said, when you take it too long, flipping them pages. Okay, I'm here, Grandpa. Go to, go to my second song. Everybody go to Psalm 2. Grandpa want to talk to us. So I came. He want to talk to us. And he said, get there with the quickness. It's a holy Shabbat. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Why? Whoo, talk, Grandpa. The kings of the earth set themselves. They did what? They set themselves. Who? The king of the earth. Kings of the earth. Think they something. And the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his anointed. Against who? His anointed. Against who? His anointed. Ain't that word Messiah? Yes. You non-messianic maniac, stay out of my chat room, please. You have no idea what you're doing. When you're talking about ain't no Messiah. And King David, which is my grandpa, literally saying to you today, 
Did you read Psalm 2? So what are they saying? Remember, now I need you to been who have been following my series in Revelation. You're going to, you, this is going to make so much sense. Your eyes going to open. It's going to make so much sense to you now. What are they going to say? Let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords from us. Now, that's heavy English to say, let's destroy them and take everything and kill them. And isn't that what the devil is going to convince, or he had done it several times, that's what he does. He convinces the kings of the earth to come down and, aff and afflict us, Israelites. And he's been doing it for a long time. And when they come against us, they always come in a rage. Why is it that you and I our, are hated all over the world when we were the ones taken into slavery? We didn't take them into slavery. They took us. They didn't make us rich. We made them rich. We didn't put them in our fields. They put us in their fields. We didn't whip them. They whipped us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That those captivities were terrible against us. And yet at the end of the captivity, all of the European nations that took part of the, the captivity of the house of Israel, every one of them is stinking rich today. Off the back of Israel. It's the blood money that they got from the house of Israel. But verse four, Grandpa, I hear you. He told me, keep reading. I said, okay, keep reading, grandson. He that sitteth in the heavens shall what? Laugh. Shall what? Laugh. Shall what? Laugh. That's funny that the heathen think they're going to keep doing that to us forever. Keep spoiling us and he going to laugh. And Yahuwah shall have them in derision. Have them what? In derision. Have them in all kind of confusion. Self, uh, Self-deceit. They're going to be messed up, confused. Yah's going to do it. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. That laugh of, uh, uh, concerning there, we're going to take them again. It's going to turn into wrath. And this is what it says. Yet, have I set my king who my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I hear you, Isaiah. I, I, Isaiah, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I know. We're going to get there. I, now Isaiah hollering to the top of his lung. Didn't I say the same thing? Didn't I say that? Isaiah, I heard you. Isaiah said, didn't I say that Yah was going to have his king sit on Mount Zion? Yes. Yes, we hear you, Isaiah. Okay, I just wanted to say. We all saying the same thing. I will declare the decree Yahuwah has said unto me. Yahuwah has said unto me. Yahuwah has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. It's prophetic. I, I hear you, Paul. Look, all y'all want to talk at the same time. Paul, I heard you. Paul said, I, Maury, I already explained this in, in my book. In Hebrews chapter 1, I told him, Who at any time does Yah say or call him? My son, this day have I begotten thee. He said, man, name one. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> Woo, Paul, you kind of, he said, I can't, it's getting rough out here. We're getting too close to the end. All right, I hear you. This day have I begotten thee. All you got to do is what? Ask. What? This is that prophet. We got a little more insight. This is the son. We're going to find some out some more. He's the visible image of the invisible young. He said, ask, ask of me and I will give you the heathen for thine inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Ooh. Be wise now, therefore, O oh, you kings. Oh, you need to learn something. Be, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Better serve Yahuwah Elohim with fear and rejoice with trembling. That's what you need to do. And what else should you do? Verse 12. Put it in the chat. Verse 12, put it in the chat. What does he say to do in verse 12? Woo, here it comes. Kiss the sun, kiss the sun, kiss the sun. You heathens getting the warning. You workers of iniquity. You rulers of this present age. You world leaders and influencers. You so-called up there in the muckety mucks. You who plan destruction against us and continually working in it. We got a king coming. He's the visible image of the invisible Yah. He will be known as the son of Yah. But in him dwells the fullness of Yah in a bodily form. Get that straight. And you better learn how to kiss the sun. Lest he be angry. Watch. And you perish. That means die. From the way when his wrath is kindled just a little. You have no idea who this judge is, this king that you're going to have to face one day. You better kiss him now. And blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Oh, yes. Now, that means you're blessed. But you're going to have to shift your trust from whatever you're trusting in now to trusting in him. And part of trusting in him means you also going to have to help the house of Israel. You can't tear us down. You can't plan our destruction and think you're going to be with the king of Israel, who is our kinsman redeemer. What makes you think you can kill us and be with our king at the same time? Okay. Grandpa, you got anything else to say? I can hear Grandpa hollering. I got a whole lot to say. I got way more to say. But for now, let Israel think about that. Okay, Grandpa. Thank you. I told you I can't listen. There's too many of y'all with your hands up. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to talk. Daniel said, Daniel says, can he just talk about what he saw? And can he share with, will I share with you what he saw? And Daniel is saying, if you want to, you can spend a little bit longer um, in what I said. Just and then and then I because I, what I say covers a lot of what everybody else is saying. You sure? Yeah. No, Daniel's my cousin. So, cousin Daniel, listen. Our people, Israel, is in a situation where we just came out of 40, 400 year captivity. He said, I know. And we come up out of there calling ourselves Christians. I know, I know. You know, most of us, cousin, when we 
woke up, the truth, we was in church. I mean, we were all like Christians, you know, I know that. And we was following like a European image of Jesus. And we thought that that was Hamasha. He was like, the damn shame. Cause why you say that? He said, I, I, I told you who Messiah was. So you listen to the European over your own cousin. You listen to the European over your own kinfolk. You listen to the European over your own prophet. Even though I was actually in captivity. I actually suffered for the cause. I was thrown in the lion's den because I was a man of prayer. I'm the one that read the handwriting on the wall. And you'd rather listen to a European tell you about the last day than listen to me, huh? Old house of Israel. Okay, Daniel. I hear you, man. Daniel said, tell him what I said. Okay. Okay. I'm about to tell him. So go to Daniel. Daniel want to talk now. What are you saying, Daniel? He said, well, first thing I want to say is the judgment day is coming. John said it. I know. Kepha said it. I know. David said it. I know. Moses said it. I know. Isaiah said it. I know. But I, Daniel, I got to talk to you now. Judgment day is coming. The beast system will be destroyed completely. And all of the beasts with all of their heads and all of their horns will eventually be destroyed by our Messiah. You understand that? I got it, cousin. There are going to be some big horns. I got to get out the way. And uh, there are going to be some little horns. Yeah, but they all will go into perdition. You got my book open? Yes, Daniel, your book is open. Chapter 7, verse 13. 12. And as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. Did you hear that? Daniel chapter 7, verse 12. And as concerning the rest of the beasts, as concerning the rest of the world religions, the rest of the world governments, they had their dominion taken away. Who took it? Yeah. Yet their lives were prolonged Yet their lives were prolonged. Yet their lives were prolonged. For how long? Uh, just a season and a time. And I saw in the night vision, behold, one like the son of man. Oh, there, wait a minute. <laughs> you saw the same one that David saw? Of course, cousin. I saw the same one Isaiah saw. I saw the same one Jeremiah saw. I saw the same one uh, that Moses saw. And I know you're talking about my uh, my cousin Yaakanan today, but Yaakanan saw the exact same one I saw. The son of man. Talking about the Messiah. Daniel, what are we going to do with these non-messianic maniacs talking about ain't no messiah daniel say they give me a stomach ache what do you mean they make me sick i saw in night vision 
and behold one like the son of man come in cloud come in the cloud the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought near before him and there was given him dominion who is one like the son of man about to the ancient of days And glory, like glory and honor, like glory, like respect. And a kingdom, and a kingdom. Mm -hmm. All you had to do is read it, it's always been here. That all, who? All people. What, what people? All people. All people, all nations, all languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that you saw the prophet? You saw the king? You saw the son of man? You saw the son of Yah. Say yes. He's the visible image of the invisible Yah. And everybody, every nation, every language, every people had to serve him. Because his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. And I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. And in the midst of my body. In other words, when he saw it, and then he saw us, and he saw how far away from the righteousness of Yah we would be at this time, he literally says, I got sick my stomach, he said, and the visions of my head troubled me. Why would they trouble you? He said, because I know what this judgment is. And what troubles me is that people don't know what the judgment is. Even though we've been trying to tell them Moses, David, Isaiah, Ezekiel, me, Joel, Amos, everybody, all of us been trying to tell Israel the same thing. Y'all don't realize how close you are to the judgment and that Yah is going to judge the whole world. There will be a day of judgment when he will judge the entire world. And the only difference between you and that heathen is going to be whether or not you have followed him and kept his commandments. Because the way Israel is right now, it looks like they're siding with the beasts. Even though I'm telling them that the beast is going to be destroyed, the way it looks is that they are fascinated with the beast. They are infatuated with the beast. They are brainwashed by the beast. They got some kind of Stockholm syndrome with the beast. That the house of Israel is starting to act like a beast. They are starting to pick up the crimes of the beast, the behavior of the beast, the language of the beast, the religion of the beast. They eat the food of the beast. They celebrate the feast days with the, the holidays with the beast. Matter of fact, they love the beast. And the reason that I keep getting a headache and a stomach ache every time I have to do this is because I can pour my heart out and write it down and tell the people. And they still won't turn. Wow.
But Daniel, you said you wanted me to stay with you a little longer. He said, yes, yeah, stay with me a little longer, please. Okay. What you want me to do? Go to chapter 10 of my book. All right, I'm there. You in chapter 10? Mm -hmm. Read it. You want me to read it, Daniel, to the world? Read it. Why? Because your people have been told by the heathen and by the beast that you can't read my book. The beast have told our people. Ain't this crazy? Think about this, Zion. The beast system told us that we can't read Daniel, that you can't read your cousin, that you won't be able to understand what your cousin wrote. So just don't read it. It's Old Testament. It's been done away with. It ain't got nothing to do with you today. So then Daniel tell me, nah, -uh. my people can read this just like I can read the handwriting of Yah on the wall and Belshazzar could not. My people can read my writing even when the heathen cannot. And if you understand that, Put a hundred thousand in this chat, please, Zion. That even if this Babylonian beast system cannot understand this, me and you can. All we have to do is read it. All you have to do, told our rabbi, yeah, is have someone, not just me. Someone like me who is called to be a seer, show it to you. Daniel showed it to me. I'm going to show it to you. In the third year of Cyrus, Daniel chapter 10, verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed to Daniel. What? You heard me. He has the very year under who the king was and where he was when he had this thing revealed. Whose name was called Belteshazzar. Oh, you Babylonians giving us, changing our names, huh? Another evidence of captivity. You did the same thing to us, except for us. You you made us, you beat our name out of us. We ain't even going to get into that, you heathens. A thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar, and the thing was true. And the thing was what? True. Now, Zion, what about that you can't understand? You see how these heathens lied to you growing up? Now this is the awakening remnant. So the remnant that's waking up, you reading this and going, this ain't hard to understand. What do you mean I can't read this? Well, all I don't have to do is show it to you. It's true. But the time appointed was long. What do you mean long? In, in other words, Daniel said, the time that I got this vision, even though I was in Persia, this was during the time of Cyrus. It got revealed to me, but it wasn't for the that particular time I was living in. This was this time appointed was a long ways off. And he understood the thing and had an understanding of the vision. He said, Man, I, I knew it wasn't about watch this. I knew this wasn't about Babylon because I was in Babylon, <laughs> I was in the captivity. The, this revelation was about something that's going to happen in the future. But it was still true. All right. Cousin, would you please talk to your great nieces and nephews and cousins? No problem. In those, da in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks, 21 days, man. I was in mourning. 
okay, this, this Daniel now, this is your cousin talking. He says, I ate no pleasant bread. I mean, all my bread was old and stale, molded. Neither came flesh. He said, I didn't eat, I didn't have no chicken. I didn't eat no beef. I didn't have no fish. No wine. I didn't even have a drink of wine, not even one glass of wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself with oil. He said, I didn't even put lotion on. I didn't even put oil on. My hair, my face, my body, nothing. Which means what? I was not only, uh, I was on, not only in, in uh, mourning, eating this unpleasant bread. He said, I also didn't even put my own personal hygiene first. I didn't anoint myself at all. Until how long? Until, until three whole weeks were finished. Now, Zion, I just read that to you. What is so confusing about that? What is so mysterious about that? What is so out there that, oh, Daniel, oh, that's two books don't know about it. You can't read Daniel. You can't read the Revelation. Daniel said, you can read this. I'm making it as plain as I possibly can. And in the four and 20th day of the fourth month, the 24th day of the first month, I was by the side of a river. I can understand that too. Abib 24, you was by the side of a river. Which is Hedda Kale. I know what I know what Hedda Kale is. That's the Tigris. And I know what a Tigris is. All I gotta do, pull up on the map, it's two rivers over there. The river Euphrates and the Tigris. That's not confusing. If y'all can see it now. You know what? I, I need to get out the chat. I need I'm, I'm gonna let y'all go on this whole issue by. But if you can see this, would you put a 500,000 in this chat, please? You can see it. Like, okay, why is that so confusing? Why are you scared to read it? Why don't you read this all the time and study it? Put a 500,000. All right, cousin, what else you want me to tell her? Keep reading. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked. Okay, so after 21 days, three weeks of fast, uh, uh, mourning, you lifted up your eyes finally. And when you looked, behold a certain man, you saw somebody. Wouldn't know anybody though. Who'd you see? A certain man. What'd he have on? Linen. And whose loins, that's his thighs, his, his legs were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. Okay, I can see that image. His body, his what? Oh, yeah. After three weeks, I saw him. After three weeks of fasting or praying and mourning and prayer and not thinking about myself, but only focusing on him, after three weeks, I saw him. If you're in this room and you can see, that Daniel saw him. Put a 600,000 in the chat. You know when he saw him, where he saw him, who was king when he saw him, what river he was by when he saw him. That ain't hard. That ain't, you don't have to be 
some kind of scholar to unravel that. He's telling you. I saw him. King James Version. I'm reading this. His body. His what? His body. His what? His body. He had a body. I told you I saw him. I keep trying. I can hear that. Saying, I keep trying to tell y'all over and over again. John ain't lying. My great, 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 great cousin or nephew trying to tell y'all what's going on. He's not lying. I saw the exact same one he saw. His body was like a barrel. Now stop. What is a barrel? It's a stone. And let me tell you what's interesting. The actual word there in Hebrew, not English. The actual word there is the word for yellow jasper. I let us again. Sometimes it takes time for Israel. Sometimes it takes time. I know some of y'all clicking it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me look that up. Look it up. When you type in barrel, if you look at it in the interlinear, you're going to find the word that means yellow jasper. Hmm, that color sure do look familiar. If we just call ourselves color matching. The color looks so familiar. Wow. Hmm. Boy. Ooh. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that? Wow. Yes, I'm pausing on purpose. Maury, why are you pausing? To give you a chance to look up the word. It literally means yellow jasper or gold colored stone. So when you type in barrel, you ask the question, why did they write barrel there? Because when you type in barrel, you get a bunch of different, you get a bunch of different colors. So which one is he talking about? But then you actually go to the inner linear and you find out that this particular precious stone is listed several times in the Bible, but both of them have the idea Golden. And you all know that gold and brass, and when you use the word yellow, we're not talking about a crayon yellow. We're talking about just like when we call, if we have a brother, we say, hey, that brother is high yellow. We don't mean he yellow as a color crayon. We, what we're saying is that he's light skinned. That his, that his skin is light because brown has a bunch of shades. 
his body. But we will say today, his body is brown. He said, I saw his body. Hold on now. His body was like Beryl. Why did the European tell us that he's white? That he's a European? Why? When your own cousin told you, no, I saw him. And his face, as the appearance of lightning, pause. What does that mean, as the appearance of lightning? And you heathens us in the chat, before you start typing away and saying lightning is white, he not talking about the color of lightning. He's talking about the appearance of lightning. What do you mean? He's talking about the action of lightning. He's talking about the power of lightning and what lightning is able to do immediately. Out here in California, we don't get a whole lot of rain. But every now and then when we do, you could be driving and all of a sudden you just get a flash of lightning. And you know what it does? It arrests everybody. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that lightning? Yeah, I saw it. That's how his face is. That's the real Hebrew meaning behind lightning. Mem, Resh, I left. Hey. It has to do with number one, a sight, or you could say a phenomenon. Something that is desirable in, the, in appearance. When you look at it, makes you see it, it makes you look. And when Daniel said it was like lightning, in intertwined with what he was saying was his face is gonna get everybody's attention. And 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 his face is really altogether lovely. It's beautiful, but it's also powerful. Everybody gonna see it. Just like how lightning arrests you, his face is going to arrest you. Now listen to me, you heathens. This ain't got nothing to do with our king having a white face. You're going to hell for that. Now you heard the truth from the moral right? It's been explained, and people in the chat, I looked it, looked it up, because we have an intelligent uh, assembly that know not to take my word for it. But even if you didn't believe me, it's right here, you heathens. You the one wrote it down. Oh, you didn't think we was gonna click on that word. You thought we was cool with just, with just lightning. Mm -mm. This is, this is, hold on, this is a new Negro. This is a new Israelite you're dealing with. So we got the barrel that we really know is really yellow jasper, which if Moray put up against his own skin, I ain't got to do everybody in Israel. I just do my skin. There go one look out so much. That's so much like me. It looked like I pulled my skin up into the page. I got time to fool with you. You... Hey, y'all gonna stop that. And let me tell you something. This idea that you get a picture 
And then you try to say that the picture is not real and that we can't understand it when it's easy to understand if you understand he's talking about what y'all will call a black man, but he's really brown. Prove it, Moray. Okay. His eyes as lamps of fire. As what? You know good and well he mean is fire in his eyes. And the fire of his eyes represents judgment, but it also represents the red of the eyes. You know that. And the Bible says that Hamashiach was going to have eyes red like a man had been drinking wine. Oh, yeah, we're going to, I'm not done. And his arms. And his feet in color, like what? Put it in the chat, please. Daniel said he wanted to spend a little time here. In, in color of what? There it is. Now I understand why you heathens didn't want us to read the Old Testament or Revelation. Revelation 1 said he's the color of brass, bronze, and Daniel chapter 10. You can see it. So you saw the one sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. Can you describe him? Sure, I can. He was like, like yellow jasper, like a brown, beautiful brown hewn stone. His, uh, his face was so arresting and attractive, powerful. And at the same time, his eyes, they, they, they were red like he had been, like he had been drinking wine, but it was more like fire, like he had judgment on his mind. Did you see anything else? Well, he had it on a robe, but his arms was out was outside the road. Real? Mm -hmm. What were they like? Bronze. Why are you staying here, Moray? For truth's sake. Neither one of these is our Messiah. You know that. Don't write me. This is not kindergarten. These two things have been presented to us as an image. This one ain't nary aware in the Bible ever. This one is nowhere ever, ever, never, never, ever, ever in the scripture. This came out of Europe. This is a European picture of Caesar Bourget, a demonic son of a Catholic priest, which is part of the B system. Compared to this image that is taught throughout scripture the whole time. Hair, white like wool, Eyes like fire, skin like polished brass. Glowing like a barrel. Like a polished gemstone. 
brown gemstone and arresting like lightning. It's he that put this together. You know, we don't use this word. But if his head like this and his skin like this, and he's from here. Who is this? Who is this? If this is his hair, this is his skin. Where, who wrote this? Who put this in our, our, who? This, this is a picture of your slavers. This is really the picture of the beast that will be destroyed. I'm gonna have to do that next week when I get there. When I open, when you get to the to the to the uh, to the actual judgment, we're gonna find out who this is again. This was prophesied; it would come. This was prophesied and wrote down in our history books that they would change the likeness, like unto themselves, that they would turn everything to be European or white. This was prophesied. This is not an accident. This was done on purpose. Now, I'm um, gonna show you. Let's keep reading. It says, and his voice. It was. And his voice. What do you mean his voice? I heard him talk. I could hear his voice. What was his voice like? Well, I'll tell you what it was not like. He was not talking like this, man. Hi. Just come and accept me in your life, and you don't ever have to keep the laws anymore. If you could follow me, you never have to um, obey any of the commandments. If you follow me, I will make sure that all you have to do is just say some magic words and those magic words will automatically let you in to the house of my father. And me and you and the father, we're going to be so happy. There won't be any rules, no regulations. We can eat all kinds of sh shrimps and um, we can eat skunks if we want and um, pigs until we can't eat no more. And we don't have to do the Shabbat. Uh, yeah, we don't have to keep the commandments. We can make up our own. Yeah, and don't worry about judgment. There won't be any judgment for the Christian. The Christian. No judgment, no judgment. Just put your faith in me. No judgment. No white throne. No death. No hell. No more torture. Just put your faith in me. Boy, they had us too. <laughs> That devil had <laughs> until we read and found out he was dead. We was like, you know, you better keep them commandments, boy. Who you talk about? <laughs> you know, I ain't playing. I will. <laughs> until we saw. It's a big difference. 
between this with sword drawn and this. Oh, don't worry. You better worry. Don't keep the gun. You better keep it. Look, look. You can now listen. All it takes is a seer to show you. As soon as I show you, you know it's a difference between this and this. I've used this a lot of times. Did you see his feet? I did. Daniel, did you see his feet? I did. What would they look like? They look like the color of polished brass. So who feet are these? Walking on the Santa Monica Pier with these Birkenstock. Who is this? <laughs> I, I need to know who this is right here. Who talking about uh, he going down to Malibu Beach. Because this don't look nary like polished bread. Now this right here. Now that looks like this. Elementary school. This looks like this. This, this right here, uh, I could have, I could have swore I saw this walking not too long ago. Uh, in Santa Cruz. So, but hey, dude. Hey, dude, you got that fire? Hey, dude, you got that fire? <laughs> Turn to that heathen. No, I ain't got no fire. What are you talking about? Hey, chill out, dude. Chill out, dude. We're just out here to have a good time. You know, he was wearing Birkenstocks. Ankles is... And feet, this ain't him. Why are you doing that more? You spent all this time. We're talking about the great white throne. Yeah, I got to show you who's sitting on that throne. See, that's going to change a whole lot of minds. And this is going to open a whole lot of eyes. Depending on who you think is on the throne, got a lot to do with. I'm talking about a whole lot to do with how you getting ready to act. If you think this is on the throne, you ain't gonna have no fear of it. Because if this is on the throne, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up there and if he tried to say something, you're gonna slap fire from this little this little soft thing right here. With them eyes looking, and I told you guys this, and, and I, I keep telling you this over and over again, and I know right now I'm over so many people's heads, you're not gonna ever understand this, but some of y'all gonna catch this. I am an artist. I know what people are doing when they write things, when they draw stuff. I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about ancient. Today, people don't care about nothing. There's no thought put into art today. But back in the day, they made this picture androgynous on purpose. And I know some of y'all going to say, Maury, what do you mean? I said they made this picture to where it will look like a woman. They did a half and half. Look, I showed you this before. This is a woman. You see it? It don't work with other pictures. Is that? <laughs> does that work? No. But why does it do it with this one? I'll tell you. There you go. Okay, you can say what you want. You start twisting little things in this way. I'm telling you. That's not to judge. 
Let me get this voice in here before I go. And the voice of his word was like the voice of a multitude. Do you see that? Now, when we start talking about voices, especially of a multitude which has to do with timber, um, the vibration of the voice and how it sounds, the um, our cousin Daniel is trying to explain to us what kind of voice he has to let you know who he is when he's talking. And let me share something with you. This may sound racist, but I promise you I'm not being racist. Most people can tell on the telephone if they're talking to what they call a black man by the way the voice sounds or even a black woman. I don't use the word term black, but I'm using it, I'm just, so you identify what I'm talking about. Most of the time when you talk to someone, when you hear their voice, you can tell, even if they were born here on this soil and raised here, you can listen to the voice and tell whether or not that's an Israelite talking. And some of our Israelite brothers, I was listening to him yesterday. Got voices like water, got power in their voices. That if they yell or they holler, or they say something, it just it just commands attention. I'll give you an example. Have you heard James Earl Jones talk? His voice is so powerful and so demanding when he talks that when they wrote the, the, the most epic movie at that particular time called Star Wars, and they needed the most epic voice that they could find for the most powerful character. Because eventually, you know that, you know, as Luke's father, spoiler alert, <laughs> They chose James Earl Jones. Because I'm your father. That 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 thing. You can't find that everywhere. Some of y'all old enough to remember Barry White. It don't matter what he he started his songs talking first. Boy, and you had to listen. Barry White. I had a bunch of examples that I had like sound things, but because of the time, I'm not going to click them. Plus, I don't know that might do something to the video or whatever people be claiming. But I was going to. I had listened to each one of these that I'm going to mention. Morgan Freeman. Voice. When these heathens got ready to do a movie called God, guess who God was? Morgan Freeman. Why? They wanted that voice. Time would fail me to talk about Keith David and Michael Clark Duncan. And if you don't know who that is, that's the brother from the Green Mile. You know, he passed not too long ago. But that voice. They had him playing Hawk. They had him as Kingpin. They, they had so many movies. I want to get into all that. But even if they didn't use his face and he was just a voiceover, like in a cartoon, he was always the baddest dude. 
and it was his voice. And, and I'm gonna tell you, cause I, I was raised with one. My father had that. And when I got called to preach, I, I always wondered how come y'all didn't give me that? <laughs> I thought I would be so much more effective if I would have had a voice like my dad. My dad had one of them kind of voices. That whole, that all those people I just mentioned, you know how they got that low, like, you know. <laughs> my father could do that same thing. And he could, he could be, and, and, and I can't lie about this because there's two people around me who know who, who I'm talking about, who knew my father. He could be in the stands at a football game outside, way at the top. I could be on the field, or anybody could be on the field. My father could yell from the stadium with everybody else in the stadium yelling, and everybody would turn around to hear my father. They could see it was him, like, oh man, it's here. Oh. They would say, Morris is here. <laughs> My father yelled from the top of the stadium one time. This is just side, but I'm just talking about voice now. I, w I went to go watch a game. I can't remember who was playing, but me and my dad went. We set up at the top. The game was going so bad. My father was passionate. And he yelled from the top of how the coach was calling terrible plays. And I'm sitting by my dad. Everybody yelling, the whole crowd going crazy. My one father, he just yelled. You don't know what you do? Do you even know how to play football? And that coach, I know y'all think I'm joking. That's okay. There's somebody watching this might have been at that game. That coach turned around and looked for my father and said, Do you think you can do better? And my dad said, You damn right, I can do better than you're doing. Anybody can do better than what you're doing. And the whole crowd was focused on my dad. My dad got up, walked down, and went on the field. <laughs> they had to come get him. I said, oh, there he go. <laughs> he went down. He's got, he started walking from the top of them bleachers all the way down, walked over the fence, and went on the sideline. And the, and the referees had to take him out. I grew up with a Mufasa. <laughs> I think that's a lot of times why, why when I hear um, – when I'm reading the scripture and I hear things like that description, I know what that voice used to do to me when he would call me, especially if I got in trouble. What it, it would it would go into your bones, like on the inside. It vibrated like that. It was powerful like that. And I know what y'all think. Like I said. Y'all didn't give me that kind of voice because if I got that kind of voice, I might have been talking. <laughs> it might have been hard for me to go the preaching route. No, I'd have been like this. You see it? If I he'd have gave me that voice, I'd have been talking about yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. I'm standing here too long. But whoo, y'all didn't let me. I, I, I mean, I got some a lot of things from my dad, but that's one thing I wish I would have got from him. I wish I would have got that voice. But ain't no telling. It might have been hard for y'all to reach. <laughs> reach the young Yosh boy. Woo! Yeah, it'd probably been too bad. It'd have been bad. Let me just stop right there. I'm gonna, let me stop right there. But he had that voice. It commanded attention. It it uh and and it had a way uh because I, I shared this several times. One of the things that I realized that my father knew about his voice is that he couldn't always talk with that voice all the time because it scared people. Because if he just raised his voice, it would just put people in a weird place. But in this text, Daniel said, 
Then when he saw the king, he heard his voice. And it was what? Like a great multitude. No, it was like no ma'am and no sir it was one of them voices that you don't want to be on the wrong side of it because if he raised his voice Judgment's coming. I've been in here long enough. I hear all these other preachers, prophets in the Bible, got their hand up, want me to. I can't preach from everybody. I can't tell, I can't tell everybody's story. Okay. 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 Matthew said, you're going to hear my story. Okay, Matthew, you got it. Matt and Yahoo now wants to speak. Go to chapter 25. Matthew said, I've been waiting this whole time, Moray. And you've been talking about John, talked about Kepha, talked about Paul, talked about everybody. You're just going to know Matthew. Matt and Yahoo. He said, good. I didn't talk about him. What you want to talk about? Judgment Day. Okay. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. We read it almost word for word. When he comes in his glory, David. I didn't even do Isaiah. When he comes in his glory, Isaiah. When he comes in his glory, Jeremiah. When he comes in his glory, Ezekiel. When he comes in his glory, Daniel. When he comes in his glory, 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 and then now Hamashiach, Matanyahu is saying, I recorded Hamashiach saying the exact same thing. What did he say? When the son of man shall come in all his glory and all the holy angels with him. And who? All the heavenly angels with him. And all the holy angels, wait, all of them. Yes, all of them. There will not be one angelic being that will not be in attendance at that day of judgment. All. Did you say all? All. The holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. You echoing Daniel word for word. I, I know. You just echo, you just echo da uh, David. I know. And I said, I know. Man, Yahoo, are you saying that he literally said this out of his mouth? He said, Oh, yeah, he quoted the verse talking about himself. He said, Oh, my day is coming when I'm getting ready to sit on the throne. And we know who you are now. We, we can see the king. We know what he looked like. And then what's going to happen? I, I'm, I'm really going to exit now. And before him shall be gathered all nations. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. He can't say that. Because the Christian said that the Christian won't be gathered under judgment. Who said that? The Christians. Come on, Moray, you know that. I know what? 
that the Christian, you know, if you're a Christian, you don't have to worry about the judgment. Paul, I hear you, Paul. I hear you. Okay, wait. Paul said he got to talk. Second Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five. What verse? He said verse 10. Put in the chat. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 10. For we all, what? For we all, for we must all, for we what? For we must some. No, Hebrew. For we must some. No. For we must all, all, all. The judgment day is coming. Point number one. He who sits on the throne is Hamashiach. And don't get it twisted. He's the line of the tribe of Yehuda. He is not a European. He don't act like no European. And he ain't no member of no Christian church. He is the line of the tribe of Yehuda. And he dies to ratify the covenant of Israel. And his blood is for the remission of our sins. He died, but death couldn't kill him. He was buried, but the grave couldn't hold him. And he got up according to the scripture. And then they come talking about, we ain't got to worry about the judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Get that through your head, the rest of look, No, you know what? The rest of the world, y'all do you. Israel, you better hear me. Don't you follow these heathens to hell now. For we must all now this is crazy that was funny how can he say we must all and the christian church say that we all ain't gonna do this he said no i didn't say for you must all paul who they claim was a christian who wasn't no christian by the way he didn't follow no christianity you can forget that <laughs> paul said we he put himself in here he said, for we, 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 Paul said, you and me, where are we going? We're going to appear before the judgment seat. Of who? Oh, it's a Mashiach seat. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Wait, what did you just say? You're going to the judgment to get what you got coming. No, yes, according to as he has done, whether it be good or bad, you go in. We are all must appear. Nobody is absent from this appearance. You can forget it. And you heathens, where did you even get that from? Oh, <laughs> there's two judgments here. There's the judgments here to cry, and then there's the judgments here to God. You going to hell for that too? You double God worshiping, you know what? You satanic, demonic, demon possessed devils teaching doctrines of demons and devils for one purpose, and that is to lead the house of Israel astray so that they will end up in the bottomless pit with you, the beast, the false prophet, Hasatan himself, the dragon. What are you trying to do to us? Telling us it's two judgment seats. That ain't what he said. The judgment seat of Hamashiach is the white throne. Judgment. Everybody saw Hamashiach on the seat. Everybody saw Hamashiach judging. Everybody said everybody came and was judged by him. It's a judgment seat of Christ. And then there's a judgment seat of God. Who's your God? You got two gods? Christ is a God? And then God is a God? What the heck is wrong with y'all? Witchcraft. And that witchcraft, you've been pulling it on our people a long time. And I'm so happy that Yah has called me to be a seer so we can clarify some things. Hear, O Israel. Yahuwah, our Elohim, is one, Yahuwah. When you get to the day of judgment, whether you are 
whether you die and are resurrected to the judgment day, you will not be going through no two judgment seats. I don't know where they got that from. Let's keep going. Verse 11. Knowing therefore, write it in the chat. Knowing therefore the what? Let me get a drink of water. Nary, knowing therefore the what? I'm, I'm looking in the chat. Look, look. I said the terror. Raymond said it. Is that Shelby Rose said it? Charlotte, the, the fear, the fear, the terror, the terror, the terror, the terror, the terror, terror. What's so terrifying about the judgment? Read the revelation. The final judgment is your eternal destination. And the end result of not keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments is hell, fire, brimstone, bottomless pit, lake of fire, day and night with the devil. He ain't going to want to be there. All the people that was in the beast system and the beast religions, and you going too. Ain't nowhere in the Bible you can just say, you no know, three little magic words, and all of a sudden you think you done stamped your way into the kingdom of Yah. That ain't how it happened. They lying to you. Maybe, maybe white European Jesus said that, but... That brother, Yehoshua Hamashiach, the one that Daniel saw and the one that Yehachanan saw in Revelation chapter 1, he said the ones into the, going into the kingdom are the ones who keep the commandments of Yah and the testimony or the covenant of Hamashiach. And whether you do or not, you still going to stand here. Believe that. And Paul said, it ain't going to be no tiptoeing through no tulips. He said, therefore, knowing therefore the terror of Yah, we persuade men. You do what? He said, oh, yeah. Knowing the terror? That's why we're preaching. I mean, we are made manifest unto Yah, and I trust also uh, made manifest in your conscience. What is he trying to say? He's like, you don't understand why we preaching. If we thought there was no judgment for us, we would have been done preaching. If we thought that we had already stamped our way into the kingdom, we would have been done a long time ago, especially trying to deal with Israel. With all this back talking and, and Bible words and cuss words, and we're trying to help them read the Bible. And I'm like, we don't need to support no preacher. You out there, you don't do it yourself. Or he needs to preach to me, even if I give him nothing, he's supposed to preach. We got to still do that. Boy, if it wasn't for the terror of the Most High Yah, most of us would have been put our feet up. If we knew that our that our that our eternal life was already stamped in the kingdom and there was no judgment and we didn't have to give an account of nothing. You know what we'd be doing right now? On the beach with our, with our feet tickling the sand, just waiting for the time to run out. Oh, believe it. Maury, you don't love us. Oh, I do love you, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Maury, you wouldn't preach if it wasn't, if it wasn't no judgment day? Probably not. I, I, I got to take this ridicule. I got to take the memes. I got to take the talking about. I got to take the people being selfish and stingy, even though every time I get behind lights and cameras, I'm pouring my heart out. I got to live like that until the end. Why? Judgment's coming. For who? Me too. I, I, I've asked everybody close to me, and they can put in the chat, they know this. I ask everybody close to me, I said, I want you all to keep praying for me. And they said, what? I said, that my motives for preaching the gospel stay pure. Why? I don't want to get in the judgment day. Stand before the throne after all this preaching and sweating and hollering and studying behind these lights and cameras. And it come out. 
You did it for your own pride, arrogance, self-centered. Ah! Zero means nothing. I don't want that. When that day is called, ah, in my name, come up in the kingdom. Yeah, I know that day is coming. I want it to be done because the love of, of Yah. It's what is controlling me. Let's get back in that Matthews. I think I clarified who's going to be there. Everybody. And there ain't no two judgments. You lying. Y'all in trouble for that one too. One judgment for the whole world. And you got two gods. You're going to go to one judgment. And then there's only one thing. And I don't know where y'all got that from. You got it from the devil. Let's read this. Let me go with this. Son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. He shall sit on the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations, not some, all, everybody. And he shall separate them. Who are going to separate them? Son of man. It won't be your pastor. It won't be your so-called popa. Papa, it won't be your president, your leader, your grandma, your uncle, your cousin, your mama, and your daddy that think you the most wonderful thing on earth. They're not the ones going to be doing the separating. Yah will. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. But the goats on the left. Then shall the king say, oh, he's talking. Oh, you better believe it. What are you going to say? Well, to those on the right, he's going to say, come on. You blessed of my father. That's what I want to hear him say. Inherit the kingdom. Huh? Come on. Wait, no, no, I thought it was the church. No, it's never been about no Christian church. It's always been about the kingdom of Israel. The house of Israel. Come on. Now you can become a part and inherit. Enter into your inheritance. Prepared for you. I, I got to keep going because I will never get out of here. Prepared for you from the foundation of the world. What? Question. How or why am I allowed into the kingdom and into the inheritance? For, which is because Now, wait a minute. The Christian church said, I ain't got to do nothing. But the king actually says, this is how you're going to get in. When I was hungry, Can you hear the king sitting on the throne, that great white throne? Talking to him, I said, when I was hungry, you, you gave me meat. You gave me food. No, yeah, yes, you did. When I was thirsty, 
you gave me something to drink. Do you see the four? Do you see it? These people told them you don't have to do nothing. They're lying. You do have to do something. If you want to get into the kingdom, the king himself said it. You do have to work. You do have to do something. You do have to keep the covenant. You do have to keep the laws and the statutes and the commandments. He said, these are all commandments. These are all, this is all part of our Torah. I was a stranger. You was a stranger? Mm -hmm. And you took me in. Naked. And you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison. And you came to me. Isn't that amazing? You're talking to the king of the universe on the most awesome day and terrible day ever. And he starts to reveal something about how you helped him. And therefore, you go into the kingdom. So they're thinking exactly what you are thinking right now. They are thinking the exact same thing that you're thinking right now. They're saying, they're saying unto him, King, when saw we you hungry? Like, when did we see you hungry? And then had and then actually fed you. When did we see you thirsty? and give you drink, something to drink. When did we see you a stranger and took you in or naked and gave you clothes? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came unto thee? Now y'all underline this because you're going to forget all about what your preachers and pastors and grandmas and uncles and cousins and schools and pro and so-called prophets and institutions. We finna put all that to rest right now. You need to stop listening to anybody but the king. Listen what the king said. Underline that word king. Matter of fact, highlight it. Highlight the king. And the king shall answer. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch, and that word, the, the, the definition is exactly how it sounds. In as much, just like you gave, just like you did, at the exact level, much, the area that you work, how you did that, all those things, in as much as you have done it, unto the least, now listen to the word, of these, my brethren, Maury, no, you didn't tie that thing. Yes, I did. I told you I was. I told you I was going to tie that thing in there with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. I mean, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Who's his brethren? I got to go. I was uh, doing some research on this passage. 
And one of the one of the people said, if using the English word, I think it's Adolf, I mean the, the Greek word Adolfa or something like that. And he was saying that that represents anybody, right? And I was like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> The 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 Greek word they said represents Christians. So he was saying, as you've done this to other Christians or people who believe like Christians, then you've done it to me. And I said, this religious Christian church, I'm trying to tell y'all, is a beast system. The doctrines of it literally come from Satan. I know that's harsh. But the Bible says that in the last day, there will be doctrines of devils. This word, first of all, Hamashach ain't no Christian. Believe that. He wouldn't do nothing they do, including Sunday worship, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, eating swine. I could go on and on. So he ain't nothing to do with no Christian. So let's get that understood. He came as the king of king and the master of masters to fulfill the covenant. So we understand that. But the word here that Hamashiach is using is not the Greek word, which is, I think, Adolphus or something like that. The, the Hebrew word behind here, guess what it is? We say it to each other all the time. Anybody know what, what we call each other when we say, hey, put in the chat. When we, when we call the brothers, what do we say? Ah. Ah. Now read the text. Inasmuch as you have done it to the least of one of these, Aki, my beloved brethren, one of my ox, one of your who? My ox. Wait a minute. That changes everything. I thought that this verse was just about the homeless. I thought this verse was about the poor. I thought this verse was just about those down and out. Yeah, no, nah, man, I ain't talking about that. I said, when you did this to my ox, who's your ox? Who's your Aki? They're my disciples. More people, I'll try to tell you. Okay, wait, 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 Maury, you you blowing my mind. Don't worry about it. We're going to cut it off here so you can think about this all week before we come back in on the judgment seat. We're going to cut off. We're going to let it go here, but I'm going to let you think about this for a minute. Who is he talking about? He said, my I. So the question is, what is an I? Who's the I of Hamashiach? Israel, the house of Israel, and I will raise up unto you a prophet from among your Aki, from among your Ah. So he says that all these things that you've done, listen to me, Zion, you have to do it to my aunt. So who's the aunt? First of all, that word is interesting because, because aunt is just two letters, really. You know, um, you can make a plural with the akin, but aunt is just, is just uh, one. But watch this. It is aleph. Chet. And it makes ak. And with the aleph, you have a uh, strength, power, a picture of an ak, strong. And then the chet, or the chet, represents a wall, a tent wall or a wall of tents, like tents lined up one at another, like in a circle that creates a wall. So because Aleph is strong 
And the chat is a tent wall. Then you got to look at the purpose. The purpose of a wall is to protect what's on the inside of the wall. These that are on the inside need protection. From who? Those that are on the outside. So the word ak represents the strong wall. Do you understand that? So he said, this is about my eye. This is about those who have become, watch it now, the protector of the family. Because that's what the ark is. The ark is the strong wall of protection around the family. So what is the king saying? In the day of judgment, it's going to come down to separating the sheep from the goats based on what? How they treat my ox. Yes, you heathens. How they treat my brothers. How they treat my disciples. How they treat my kinfolk who are doing what? Trying to be a strong wall around the house of Israel. Yes, it's the exact same picture that uh, Nehemiah talked about when we had to go on the wall and help build the wall. Yes, it's the same picture as the watchman that's on the wall. Yes. The ark has a job to help put a fence around the house of Israel. And these are the people who end up in the position that the king is talking about in Matthew chapter 25. He says, you getting into the kingdom. Why? Because when my ox was hungry. Huh? Nobody ever showed me that more. That's what it is. When my when the men that I chose to set up as walls around the house of Israel, when they were hungry and you knew they were out on the word of y'all doing what they were supposed to do, what happened? You fed them. You didn't cuss them out. You didn't hate them. You didn't put them in slavery. You didn't beat them. You didn't jail them unnecessarily. What did you do? When you saw the house of Israel, us, when we were hungry, you said, no, I got to feed them. When I was thirsty, how did we give you water? Oh, you gave it to my ox. Who's your ox? My brethren. Remember when I told you that if you just would bring my preachers and my, uh, my prophets a cup of cold water, you would also get a prophet's reward? And then you said in your mind, well, you know, that ain't, I can do that. When you gave it to my aunt, you gave it to me. No. Oh, yes. Let's keep going. You gave me a drink. When I was a stranger, a stranger, yeah, you didn't really even know my aunt. You knew he was an aunt, but you didn't really know him like that. He was a stranger to you. But you know what you did? You made sure he had a place to stay. Like that woman did for Elijah when he was traveling. She said to her husband, can we just build like a little house in the back? What? You know, the preacher, he comes through here a lot. And, and you know, we could just, it just could be a simple room. We could have a little bed and a little candle. And we'll have a place where we have books and stuff just to come pray and rest. Oh, so he was a stranger, but you took him in. I'm taking that on. You're getting, you're getting high marks for that. Or naked, and you clothe me. These are people that's out there destitute. Maybe only one change of clothes. Maybe they gotta walk around in a camel hair suit, just just out there. But they're my eye. 
You made sure that my ox had some clothes. What else? Uh, when they were sick, you didn't just say, ah, I'm gonna pray for them or whatever. <laughs> I hope I hope y'all does something. No, when they were sick, that was your ox. He said, man, I gotta go visit. I gotta make sure you're all right. No, that was just that was just a preacher. That was just one of your, yeah, I know, but that was, that was when you did it to my aunt, you were doing it to me. And you know what else? When he went to prison, for what? For preaching. We ain't just talking about any old prisoners here. We talking about his aunt, his, his family, those who work for him. He said, you came unto him. Didn't I, I end up in prison? And didn't sometime some of the righteous went and visit them while they were in prison? And just like you would be shocked, they're going to be shocked in the kingdom that, wait a minute. So every time we did something, you took a record. He said, oh, of course. So whenever we help the kingdom, you wrote it down. Of course. Whenever, well, well, what about if he wasn't even a good preacher? What if he just was true? I mean, look, I didn't miss nothing. Come on in to the kingdom. Now watch the other group. Then he shall say to the ones on the left, now y'all need to get away from me. What? Get away from me. Depart from me. You're cursed. To what? It's right here. I don't have to make it up. Put it in the chat. Let the world see it. People watch this video in Australia. Put it in the chat. South America, South Africa. On the island of Guam. In Calcutta. In Russia. They watch this video all over the world. Put it in the chat. They're cursed to where? Ain't nobody preaching us today. That's revelation. This is the final judgment. This is the judgment seat of Christ. You so-called Christian talking about ain't nobody got to go here. Oh, you coming here. You going to hell. Everlasting fire. Now, who was it prepared for? The devil. So you are going to a place that was prepared for the devil and his angels. When you could have been coming to a place prepared for the house of Israel and for me as the king and the children of Israel. No, you chose to hate Israel. You chose to go against Israel. You chose not to help, not to feed, not to share, not to take in, not to clothe, not to visit if they're in prison. So you're going with the devil and his angels. Because when I was hungry, you didn't give me nothing. When I was thirsty, and look, it only takes one day to be hungry, two, two days, two or three days. Your mind, well, these, these heathens got you thinking of these of people that are just on the streets, right? But I'm going to tell you something about Torah that nobody want to teach either. Our Torah says, if a man don't work, neither shall he eat. And I know don't nobody want to say amen to that today. My chat keep disappearing. I'm in here all by myself. That's all right. I said, Torah teaches, if a man does not work, neither shall he eat. So this idea that we always think that that's how we're going to get to the kingdom by sprinkling a few change to somebody who just don't want to work, that's a violation of Torah. You offer somebody some work, especially if it's a man, a grown man, and they try to pull this verse. This verse is about the Akim. You give me no, and when I was thirsty, you didn't give me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, you didn't take me in. I was naked, you didn't give me no clothes. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't even visit me. And they said, answered and said unto him, 
King, when did we see you hungry? All the time. Or thirsty? All the time. Or a stranger? All the time. Or sick or in prison and did not minister to me? Never. How do you know that, Maury? Because he's going to answer and say unto them. Just like you didn't do it for my brethren. Just like you didn't do it. Then you didn't do it for me. Just like you didn't give to my brethren. You didn't give it to me. As much as you did it not to the least of, of these, you didn't do it to me. And these shall go away into what kind of punishment? Everlasting. But the righteous to what? Y'all have no idea what Judgment Day is about, do you? But hopefully I'll begin to show you today. It's not cartoons. It's not fairy tales. It's not mysterious. It's not something that nobody can understand but the European who went to some kind of weird European school. No, how about this? We slow it down and read it the way it's supposed to be read so that we can move the way we're supposed to move. So that when we get to the judgment, we won't be pushed to the left with the goats. It'll be on our record. We help the brethren. I got so many verses, but he said, you can't even say you love Yah and hate the brothers. Anybody who say they love y'all and hate the brethren, you a lie and the truth ain't in you. Talking about you love y'all, won't send no preacher, no teacher of the truth. I ain't talking about these charlatans. I'm talking about those of us who stand on Yah's word and teaching the Torah to his people and building up the house of Yah and the assembly. You holding them in contempt. Those of us who are trying to put a wall around the house of Israel, Holding us in contempt. Those of you who know that Yah has set us apart for the work of the kingdom, and you talk about that, whatever. I'll... Okay. When it comes into judgment, don't say you didn't hear it. Now, before today, you may not have, but hopefully you will hear it and understand it. So you won't be surprised when you end up in the fire. When he said, I told you how to get into the kingdom. And really, to sum all that up, what he was really saying was, you better realize who my brothers are, which is another way of saying, you need to recognize who my people are. You need to recognize who my people are that I got working in the kingdom as the strength of the house and realize what they go through every day. And I'm talking about all the kingdom now, so I'm not just talking about the male, I'm talking about the male and the female. You need to see and have your heart toward the true house of Israel. The true house. The house of Israel and the house of Yehuda that become one at the end. Because when you, when Yah, and I, this is my next week's lesson, when Yah brings the books up, he gonna open them. And your preacher telling you it ain't about no deeds, it ain't about no work, it ain't about no commandments, oh, I ain't none of that. All you gotta do is say some magic words. We are gonna prove your preacher is a liar. That is not the way to judgment. Cause the preacher actually, people actually tell you, you ain't even gotta go there. First of all, I ain't gonna deal with that right now. That's so far away from the scripture. Everybody going. But on that day, at least you could do the things that you know to do. Why? Because he already told you who's getting in and who's not and how they get in and who don't. It's not like a big secret. That's why I'm working. Who you working for, Moore? Number one, yeah. What's it for? The house of Israel. 
his family. That's why I get behind these cameras and these lights. That's why I pray for the house. That's why I studied and put the words and the scriptures together. Why? I know judgment's coming. That's why I love, try to love everybody. And I try to love everybody right. Why? Judgment's coming. I'm every day trying to get rid of any God that's before me. Why? I know the judgment's coming. And I already know how I, I can't have no other God and think I'm getting in the kingdom. I can't pile my plate up with swine and roaches. I can't bow down knees to Christmas trees and Baphomet dolls. Cupids. These churches getting ready to have Valentine's Day inside the church with literal cupids and arrows and satanic heart. Of, they get rid of that in a, in a couple of days. No, I already know that ain't going to get into the kingdom. There's a judgment day coming. I know I better know at least something about everybody who wrote in the Bible. I better know a little bit about every book. Why? Just in case it's a quiz. Make sure I'm real. I already know it's a judgment coming. I got to I gotta look around at people trying to do the work in the kingdom and help them. And I do it. Those that are thirsty, I got to bring some water. Those that are sick, I got to go by and visit. Sometimes they're not only physical sick, but what about bereavement? What about just suffering? We got to be there. Why? In the kingdom. It's going to come back. And I don't want to hear him say, depart from me. No. I want him to say, my beloved, enter into your inheritance. What is that? The kingdom. The day is coming. The judgment is inevitable. We'll all stand before the lion of the tribe of Yehudah. We're going to have to all give an account of the deed that were done in the body. We will all be tried on whether we exercise judgment. Did we come out of Babylon? We will all be judged. Everybody going to stand before the king. Mama, you standing before the king. Daddy, you worried about these earthly judges and stuff? I don't know. You going to stand before the real king. Sister, brother, Auntie and Uncle. Everybody. You going to the judgment. Whether you want to or not, you're going to stand before the judge. Let me talk to some more people. Uh, King Charles. You're going to stand before the real king, Yahushua. You queens of the world. That title will mean nothing on that day. What'd you do with the house of Israel? How did you treat his Akim? Are you 
choke off Christian popes and popes and preachers and carry it out that had slaves enslaved the house of Israel. Call us dirty and dogs. You're going to stand before the king. I don't care how many books you write about escaping the judgment. You're going. Who else is going? Prime minister. You're going. Governors, you coming to. We all got to go. You mean everybody? Oh, yeah. What about them judges? They coming to. The prosecuting attorney? Yep. The court reporter? Yep. The president got to go. Yep. The House of Representatives, every single one of them. The Supreme Court, it won't be no Supreme Court there. They'll be on their knees before our king. What's the question going to be? When you ruled on the Supreme Court, did you rule according to Torah? Or did you didn't even know what a woman was? You war among us. You going to? Every captain. You're going to meet the real captain. Every soldier. You're going to meet the real fighter. Wait a minute. Who else? All you ball players. This ain't going to help you. I don't know what this is. You better stop that foolishness. You better walk according to these laws, such as in the commandments. And you better use your influence to help build a wall around the house of Israel. Become one of his Aki. Who else going? Are you rappers? What you been rapping about? You do know when you in the judgment, all the rap lyrics coming out, right? You know that, right? You going to have to say that in front of him. Oh, yeah. I wanted to be done by the time that song was over. We the Israelites. You rappers. You lady singers. You want this, them lyrics coming out over there. What else? We the Israelites. Singers, dancers, entertainers, everybody. You got to go. And, and I'm telling you what the day is going to be like so you won't be shocked. What is it, Moore? You're going to have to give an account of the deeds that you did in your body. We'll pick it up right here next week. If y'all allows us, we'll pick it up right here next week. But if I was you, I would bow now to our king. If I was you, I would kiss the sun. Now, if I was you, I would treat everybody right now. If I was you, I would start walking in the laws and the statutes and the commandments. When? Right now. If I was you, knowing that the judgment is coming. I would help Israel. I would support the kingdom. I would. If I was you. I, I would change my lyrics if I was a rapper. I would start immediately. I would start talking about the power of Yah. Why? Because I know all them nasty, dirty lyrics coming in the kingdom. And I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to report on what I said about the daughters of Zion and the house of Israel. Because I said some terrible things. Oh yeah. Everybody come. The day of judgment. It's coming. And I'm telling you, based on the scripture, how it's actually going to be. Tell our rabbi for every prophet in the Holy Torah 
whose writings are alive today as though they were when the day they was written. Don't ever bond Moses, Abraham. Thank you, King David, Solomon, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Daniel, and all of our ancestors. Thank you for writing that down. Why? You're helping us to know the truth. Why? We can be ready. Ready for what? That great thing. Hallelujah. Put them 100. I got to go to the rebound for you uh, administrators in the house. And once again, long message. But it's out there now. And really, we just scratched the surface. Guess what we're going to talk about next week? The books. Oh, yeah, some books. But until then, to the house of Israel, one love and shalom. Thank you.